There's a bomb mailed to a person named Charles Epstein from the University of California, San Francisco. Hmm. Charles loses several fingers after opening this package. Hmm. Let's continue. A bomb is sent to a computer science professor at Yale University. That professor loses one eye. I would. Or loses sight from one eye. Surely. Hearing from a one ear and a portion of their right hand. So you can just see we're continuing here, hmm. right? It's almost like bombing after bombing, bombing, hmm. bombing, right? Hey. Hey. I have another video mm -hmm. or another story, I should say. I'm hoping this can be good. Theodore. Mm -hmm. He's born in Chicago, May 22nd. The year is 1942. He has working, working class parents and they're of Polish descent. Theodore, from first to fourth grade, he's, he's a very bright student. Administrators say he's, very, uh, he's a very healthy, well-adjusted student. He's doing quite well. His parents have another son. About three years from then, they move to a suburb. The suburb is Evergreen Park, Illinois. And as a result, of course, Theodore went to a different school, but he's also graduated to junior high school. At this junior high school, he takes an IQ test and he finds, wow, everyone, his family, he finds that he has a high IQ. His IQ is a 167. So he's able to skip the sixth grade and move up to a higher grade level. You know, but in the sixth grade, he's like very, you know, he feels very in place. He's around his peer mates. He was a leader. He, he, he socialized with his peers a lot more. But when he moves up to this higher grade, he, you know, he's, he's different, right? He's, he's much younger. So as a result, he's bullied. He starts getting bullied by these kids, unfortunately. But nonetheless, let's fast forward to when Theodore's in high school. He continues to excel. He's taking academic very serious. He continued to push through the bullying and he's able to do very, very well in high school. Matter of fact, he says, you know what? I'm not gonna allow this grade difference, this whole age thing get in the way. I'll still try to become active as a student. So he joins the marching band. He joins the mathematics club, biology club, coin club, and German club. He's very active as a student, as you can see. He's, he's trying to push through all of this, right? And, and at the same time, he's trying to balance out, you know, being very smart while also, you know. Trying to do sports and other activities. Yeah, he's trying to balance himself out, mm -hmm. perhaps make himself a little bit more well-rounded, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's, he's, it's, it's quite noticeable he's very intelligent. Even his classmates, uh, he, he has a classmate that says that a lot of his peers just looked at him as a walking brain. Mm -hmm. They'd even look at him as just as an individual person mm -hmm. or, you know, just as a friend. They say he's so smart that he's like a walking brain. Mm -hmm. And it's true, right? Theodore took mathematics. So seriously, he, began, he, he continues to study it. Uh, for hours and hours solving very advanced problems and he actually gains his little clique of friends they actually gain this name of the briefcase boys because they carry these little uh like briefcases around yeah and they look very studious right to everyone else so it's true he deserved that to a degree and it continues to pay off dividends Right, he's able to, he's, he skips the 11th grade and he's able to graduate high school by the age of 15. Ooh. Very, very smart kid. Yeah. He applies to Harvard, Harvard accepts him mm. and he receives a full, full scholarship mm. by the age of 16 to Harvard University. Yeah. However, it's it's not that simple, right? I mean, of course you can be academically smart, but you know, peers and I'm sure Theodore notices like, uh, I still lack some things, right? I'm, I'm I don't just, feel in place yeah, I, I, I still am uh, like, in a way, I'm, I'm emotionally unprepared for all of this, mm -hmm. right? I, I don't even have a driver's license. Mm -hmm. Like, this is gonna be a different experience for me. I'm not mm -hmm. ready for all of this. Nonetheless, he goes to Harvard University and he studies quite well there and a lot of professors and students say he's very intelligent but he's a bit reserved he doesn't talk much by 1962 theodore earns his bachelor's of arts degree in mathematics earning a 3.1 gpa so he's quite young and he's doing he's doing very well 
But, you know, during his studies, I want to outline something that, that is, is very vital to a degree. Mm-hmm. Uh, his second year of, of, uh, of university, at Harvard University, he took part in a, you can say, like a psychological experiment. Um, there's a, a professor, a psychologist professor, who's really interested in kind of learning how someone would react when their personal philosophy was attacked. And I'll kind of explain that. So this professor, his, the professor's name is Henry Murray. He would basically assign the students um, or basically tell the students, write a paper mm-hmm. on what you personally believe, right? Whatever you believe, just write everything you have, right? Mm-hmm. Whatever it is, just write it down on a piece of paper. Mm-hmm. And then he would have another peer from their class. Uh, it would be anonymous. Mm-hmm. Another peer in their class would receive that letter. Okay. And, you know, the student that wrote the letter had no clue who would receive it, right? Mm. And then he would have the students individually sit in a chair almost. Mm -hmm. And the students that received the letter would then criticize that person. Mm. Just say a bunch of things about what they believed and just just went hard on this person, Mm. right? It was was tough on him. That's brutal. Yeah, it was brutal. Very, very, very brutal. I can only imagine. Theodore took part in this for three years. Mm. Three years. It's a class. It was an experiment. So you can kind of, so it seemed like, it it actually seemed like perhaps this may have started as a class. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, all right, now since class is over, Join this. Mm. Join this afterwards, it's right? Like a, a plan it's like a, kind of yeah. It's thing. like a it's like a extracurricular activity uh, yeah. in some way. Yeah. Right. And I guess as a student, you can kind of say mm. like, ah, all right, I'll, I'll do this. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, perhaps if we look deeper into this, maybe we'd find that there was another benefit mm. of as to why mm-hmm. Theodore and other students continued to participate in this. But from what we know here, it's like, yeah, you just continued to mm. participate despite the downfalls that yeah. could come. And um, to be more exact, Theodore spent 200 hours. <laughs> he put in 200 hours into this experiment. Wow. Yes. It's... So uh, Somewhat very unhealthy, yeah. or not somewhat, but very unhealthy. Yeah. But you can kind of see where we're kind of going with this so far. Mm-hmm. He, he, unfortunately, he was very smart to the point that he was kind of isolated. Here you are moving up different grade levels, mm-hmm. different grade levels. You have nothing in common with your peers now mm-hmm. because you can't speak to a 16-year-old expecting yeah, them to understand what college is like. I know. Or even when he was younger and he got pushed up, mm-hmm. right? I, he skipped the sixth grade. You're missing out on that, and then you're around a bunch of kids that don't understand you, mm-hmm. that are looking at you as like, all right, you're mm-hmm. just, wow, you're different. You're mm-hmm. weird. Like, I can't even be your friend because yeah. you don't really understand what it feels like to be 19 or 20, Yeah. right? And then he partakes in this study mm-hmm. that makes him feel like, man, this is like, now I'm being basically like humiliated mm-hmm. about what my thoughts, thoughts are. are outside of academia. Why would he do it for three years knowing that he's being criticized? But like, at the same time, I guess we can kind of look at it like he's young. He's like not just young, young, like, mm, or not just young as in, mentally. oh, he's just 20. Yeah. No, if you're like 16, 17 mm. and a professor, you know, you're new to college. Mm. Professor says, hey, Theodore, Would you, you like know, to participate in I'm, yeah, I'm sure he had a hard time saying, saying no. no to things mm. being that age, yeah. right? That's hard. So, you know, again, there are probably some other factors that come mm. into play, but just that alone is hard to reject, yeah. right? Because we can all think about how we were younger. Mm. When older people told us, hey, you should do this, we, mm, a lot of us like, listen. Yeah, a lot of us just like, blindly okay, yeah. listen to someone, mm-hmm. right? Nonetheless, right, he continues. He's able to graduate, as I told you. And he's like, you know, I, I still enjoy mathematics very much. I enjoy academia. So I'm going to go ahead and pursue a master's degree. Mm-hmm. So Theodore pursues that. He goes to the University of Michigan and further than just a master's degree, he obtains a doctoral degree from mm-hmm. University of Michigan. He earns his master's degree in 1964 and his doctoral degree mm-hmm. in 1967. Mm-hmm. Right? Although it wasn't his the University of Michigan wasn't his his uh, dream university. Yeah, it's it's not his dream university. Mm-hmm. But he's like, well, they offered me uh, more scholarship money mm-hmm. and and a teaching position. Oh. 
right? He really wanted to go to, you know, University of California, Berkeley, mm-hmm. or University of Chicago, but they just, they weren't offering him anything. Mm-hmm. So he's like, all right, I'm not going to deal with that. Yeah. I'm not going to deal with them uh, because mm-hmm. they're just not giving me enough. Yeah. During his studies, he's like really partaking in, he really partakes in very specialized fields of mathematics. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of which I don't even know how to like break it down. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you would have to be an advanced math mathematics student Mm -hmm. but it's uh he was in geometric function theory he's very much so he's very much so a great student even Mm -hmm. to the professors a lot of professors really said he's just a very brilliant smart kid another professor says he's like the best student i've ever had basically Mm -hmm. like best man i've I've seen Uh, Mm -hmm. you know and these are like advisors you know basically Mm -hmm. like When you're a master's student, you know, obviously you have like Mm -hmm. someone leading your research or even when you're a doctoral student, you have someone kind of helping you with your research. Mm -hmm. And so these are the professors that are basically complimenting him. So he's a genius, basically. Yeah. Theodore is a genius. Yeah. Right. And uh, but, you know, it's interesting because Theodore still he after when he finishes his studies, he kind of reflects and thinks he actually had a negative. He says, yeah, I, I. I have a, I had a negative experience with the University of Michigan mm. because uh, he's he wasn't impressed with mm. his grades. Mm-hmm. He's he's thinking, how could I achieve twelve A's, five B's, and one F? The school's just crazy easy at grading. Mm. Why are they not trying to grade me more? Mm-hmm. So it's like you kind of get this sense of like he's kind of beating himself, mm-hmm. right? He's mm-hmm. Theodore's kind of beating himself a bit and. You kind of see it here. Um, For several weeks in 1966, Theodore starts wrestling with the sexual fantasies Mm -hmm. of being a woman. And he actually thinks, maybe I should undergo a gender transition. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should actually undergo this. So he, he like arranges a meeting with the psychiatrist and he's like, all right, I'm really thinking about doing this, Mm -hmm. right? But uh, during during his wait in the waiting room, he's like, "I, I can't do this. What are you doing? You can't, you can't undergo this transition. So he becomes so upset with himself for even feeling like this, right? He becomes like so upset that I even thought about even transitioning. I had these sexual fantasies. What am I doing, right? But as he's going through these thoughts, he's still rolling through academia, right? Mm. He's still very, very brilliant. And by 1967, Theodore publishes a dissertation called Boundary Functions. Mm. It wins awards. Um, Mm. He wins a Sumner B. Myers Prize for Mm. it. Um, It's like classified as the best mathematician Mm. dissertation of the year, Mm. right? In the entire country. So he's like, still very successful at mathematics but are you kind of getting this sense that he's internally like not really proud. he's like he's like ruined in a mm. way internally are you kind of getting that sense he's not like really proud of himself right because from the moment he started to say that um this school is not like literally giving me more like yeah. it's not like they're that being too easy yeah, on me look at my grades yeah. why are you guys Mm. You know, why are you guys giving me A's? Like, come on. Yeah. Like, he's, yeah, he doesn't believe the hype. Mm. He doesn't believe. Everyone else is telling him, mm. you're a genius, you're doing great. Like, no, I but he's like, better. come on, come on. Mm. No, this stop. This is nothing, yeah. Stop. This, is, this isn't anything. Just mm. stop. But, you know, as I told you, he wanted to eventually teach. Mm. Right? That's what he wanted to do eventually. So by the age of 25 in 1967, he's an acting assistant professor for the University of California, Berkeley. Mm. He's able to... Yeah. He went to teach to this, in the school that, that he didn't actually... Give him money. Uh, yep. That didn't really give him as much right. money or a teaching position. Mm-hmm. But eventually, once when he was done with, mm-hmm. with that, yeah. it's like his academia as a student. So he just came and taught that. Yeah. Ah. So yeah, he, he was like basically the youngest professor in history at that university at the time right he was he was on the track of tenure status but the school's realizing based on his like evaluations from Mm -hmm. students he actually isn't very well liked Mm -hmm. students don't like how he teaches they think he's just a little too uncomfortable Mm -hmm. he reads straight from the textbook Mm -hmm. and he just outright refuses to answer students questions Mm -hmm. so he's not getting the highest praise Mm -hmm. uh, from the students and perhaps this leads to his resignation Mm -hmm. 
He, he resigns. Really he resigns by June 30th, 1969. And the chairman of the mathematics department speaks to his advisor, mm. speaks to Theodore's advisor. And he's like, like basically like, man, that was like mm. random. Like mm. what happened? Why, why did why, you, yeah. why did you just quit? I mean, mm. I understand he was a very shy person. Mm. He didn't really hit it off very well with people mm. overall, right? He, Theodore didn't have this personality to be Outgoing. super, yeah, super yeah. close to the, the staff. Um, but overall, he's thinking, man, I like, I was hoping that we could eventually mm. get him up to speed with being friends with the colleagues and yeah. so forth, but it just never happened. Very unfortunate. Mm. So Theodore, after his resignation, he's like, all right, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna move back home mm. with my parents. Right, he he ends up moving back home with his parents, and matter of fact, he stays there for about two years. Thereafter, he's like, okay, I'm able to, I was able to live with my parents, kind mm. of get back on my feet, kind yeah. of just tune out all the noise, yeah, right? Yeah, remove all that negativity and all that. But it's like he still, it, it's it's like he still feels like it's not enough. Yeah. Right. So I'm gonna actually move to a place by myself. I'm gonna go to a remote cabin mm. and live there. And that's what he does. He moves to Lincoln, Montana, where he just he has this this idea, this this dream of just living a very simple life, not even needing like a lot of money, like very simple in the sense of not worrying about electricity or mm. running, running water, right? But he still had to fund this, right? Mm. Somehow, so he ends up working like odd jobs. Mm. Um, he, I you think know. that smart person is doing like I the part time and what's not. Yep. The normal world was not like it's crazy. Yeah, yeah it was. It yeah, didn't he suit just, him. He right. didn't feel so He's comfortable. He's like, this is after. just too much, right? Wow. So he moves out there. His parents end up supporting him significantly financially, right? Mm. Because I mean, how are you gonna keep? How are you gonna keep yeah. yourself up, basically? Mm. But he still has that goal of being self-sufficient, living autonomously off the grid, right? By 1975, right? So let's just fast forward a bit. So he's able to finally gain that self, you know, self-sufficiency, mm -hmm. right? Because he's been living in this cabin for a while now, right? He's been yeah. living alone in isolation and he wants isolation. You can mm -hmm. kind of get that sense. So by 1975, he starts performing these acts of arson and booby trapping mm -hmm. against any kind of developments that come near his cabin, mm -hmm. right? He's like, no, I want to be left alone. He starts reading about, you know, sociology and political philosophy. He's like really into this. He's really into it. His brother notices and says, man, he treats this, this book, specifically The Technological Society by uh, Jacques Alul. He treats this book like it's his Bible. Like mm -hmm. he loves this book and uh, he's really getting into this stuff like wow so um you can kind of see now theodore has sufficiently or successfully isolated himself it's almost like it's interesting right because from an early age from mm. he didn't choose to be isolated yeah people made that decision for mm -hmm. him and it like continued to move up but now he chose now it. he's finally saying you know what fine let me be alone. i don't want to be with you guys i will be isolated on my mm -hmm. own and it's like he gains this deep-seated root of anger so may 25th 1978 a professor a materials engineering professor at northwestern university he finds a package and the it, it really has his return address on it the professor's return address. So he's like, I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember sending this package. So he contacts the campus police. The officer, the campus police officer, opens the package. It explodes. Causes minor injuries to that officer. And so this professor received this package, but was like, yeah. "Ah, this is so weird. Mm -hmm. It has my return address. So like, I am not opening this. Let me let me call someone else to open this package." And mm -hmm. boom. Yep. Ooh. By this time, Theodore has returned. He returns to Chicago and stays there to live and work with his family, basically. So mm -hmm. he's living with his father and brother, and he's they're basically working at like a foam rubber factory. Subsequently after that, though, he gets fired from that. His mm -hmm. brother has to fire him because he's uh, basically insulting this other woman that works there. Um, he thought they had something going on. She's like, no, we don't have anything going on. 
on. Um, so his brother finds that Theodore is writing these really bad insults on these papers and leaving mm -hmm. them around the leaving them around the factory. So he's like, okay, you need to go. I'm sorry, Theodore, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to fire you, big brother. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You're fired. And that's that's a big hit, right? Mm -hmm. It's not easy be losing the job, specifically working with your family. Yeah. But Theodore continues. He's like, all right, life goes on, mm -hmm. right? Now let's fast forward to one year after that initial bomb went off. There's a concealed cigar box mm -hmm. on a table. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. The Northwestern University campus, mm -hmm. once again, mm -hmm. right? A graduate student by the name of John Harris opens it and explodes. So it's like we're finding these like mysterious bombs mm, throughout, different. right? Mm. Well, not even throughout yet, but it's like at one university, but it's like aimed at different mm. people. I guess that's what I mean by throughout. Because like, this is not a student. This is like, yeah, it's like a random graduate student. What is going mm. on, right? And let's fast forward one more time. 1979, the American Airlines staff or the pilots notice smoking, right? Some like smoking coming from... Mm coming from like the cargo hold area mm. of the plane. And so they're like, okay, we have to stop this. We have to land this plane. This mm. is an emergency landing. Where's the smoke coming from, mm. right? This is dangerous. Once when they land, they find the object and they're like, man, if this would have gone off, the whole plane, the, we would have been obliterated. Mm. They were saying this thing is so powerful, we could have mm. all blown up. Only reason why it didn't go off was because there was like a, a, a faulty timing mechanism, right? With the plane that caused that bomb not to trigger off, which is really interesting. Subsequently after that, the president of United Airlines receives a bomb, right? It leaves cuts and burns on the United Airlines president. So now we're kind of starting, at least we have four cases, right? Of just these bombs that are going off. Are you right, it's weird. Why, why an airline? Why do you think? I don't know. Like, it's not like he knows someone from there. It seems so random. Like, let's go. Because, of course, right now we know it's him. The things that he was reading and right. what's not but the school okay yeah probably because it's a school it's a university the professor blah 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 understandable an airline an airline what do you think he could be aiming for with an airline yeah honestly i don't know i'm trying to think but i can't see it okay maybe it's a theory it's a theory yeah what do you mean like you know he's smart Mm -hmm. And then he's just trying to prove a, a certain <laughs> theory. I don't know. Because okay. I, I don't think it's a beef with the airline per se and whatnot. I think he's just trying to prove. Like a theory. What do you mean a theory? Like... You see like how they say. Oh, I don't know how to explain. Go that. ahead. Go ahead. But yeah, I just think it's a theory. Like he wants to see a certain reaction. Okay, if this blows up here, what would like. How would it be? Yeah. Okay. Kind of thing. Keep that thought. Yeah. Just, yeah, you just... All right, that's that's okay. Mm -hmm. All right, let's continue. Mm -hmm. It's 1981. A package with a return address of a BYU professor of electrical engineering is discovered in a hallway in University of Utah. Mm -hmm. So there are two different universities, mm -hmm. right? But the, there's a package that's mm -hmm. for a BYU professor mm -hmm. found at this other university. So that one is also brought to the campus police, mm. but luckily that is defused by a bomb squad, oh. right? But let's continue. There's another bomb sent to a computer science professor mm. at Vanderbilt University. Mm. That package explodes on the secretary of the professor, it explodes on them. Oh, yeah. It causes injuries to her face and arms. Oh, yeah. Let's continue. Why is it? He's we like will... eliminating professors or something like that. Hmm. Yeah, I think these are professors probably who wrote a book or a thesis or I, I, I don't know, something was out there about their work and mm -hmm. he's just trying, he did not agree with what they wrote. So he's like, okay, since I don't agree with you, I'll just remove you so you're saying he's reading their dissertations yes, or yes. some of their research and was like yes I yeah am. you're wrong yeah but why do you think he would be so upset about that to the point where he, he wants to actually send to... a 
bomb to them. He does that is not crazy, know isn't it? how to express himself like that. Sending his, a bomb? Now? His way of expression <laughs> is explosive. So what's the best way to show your Nini by being explosive? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But I just think that it's about their work. And yeah. I just it's about think their work. It's, yeah, I think okay. that he does not agree with with something they wrote or something. I just have that feeling. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. But he's continuing to do this. Mm. Right. Yeah. Matter of fact, he brings it a little closer to home. Ooh. Remember University of California Berkeley? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, wow. he sends two bombs there. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. One is aimed at an engineering professor, and another is aimed at a graduate student and a captain of the United States Air Force. Well, yeah, why? That captain loses four fingers and vision in one what? eye of the United States Air Force. Does he not? Okay, uh, okay, loses one eye and... No, he loses his vision in one oh. eye and loses four fingers. Oh, yeah. Yes. But these are sent at different times. The first mm -hmm. one was sent in July 1982. Mm -hmm. The second one sent in May 1985. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And these, you can kind of look at these bombs as like being crafted out of like wooden parts. Right? Mm -hmm. So they kind of seem like these are kind of made from someone's like garage or mm -hmm. something. Like they don't really seem like they're coming from like mm -hmm. some kind of tech company. Mm -hmm. Like low key discreet tech company mm -hmm. that's has this top quality material. This is someone walking just This is someone. like someone who's making these from yeah. the garage or something, mm. right? So let's continue, mm -hmm. right? And I'll just keep going over these instances. Mm. You'll notice. Bomb is sent to Boeing Company, mm. the, the airline. Thankfully, it was defused, right? Mm. A bomb is sent to another professor, mm. right? And it was, and it does explode. 1985 of November, uh, there's a professor and the research assistant of that professor. They're both severely injured by a bomb mm. that is sent to them. Mm. It's interesting where we're going with yeah. this. I'm just gonna. It's just professor, it's just, even an airline, and professor. But what are you? What do you think? I there's think what this, is that? Then? These what professors is that? wrote something about a certain thing about. Uh, I don't know. I'm what do you think it is? This. <laughs> do you think he's protesting something? Yeah. What do you think he's protesting? Maybe it's a certain motion or something that was written about air and something. Do you think this man would literally try to kill professors or airline uh, affiliated people because yeah. of some kind of like Theory. scientific thing? Yeah, theory? yeah. And he's trying to say like, no, you're wrong. So do you think he's only going after professors and airlines? I and and students maybe who supported it. I don't know. Hold that thought. Then. Yeah. By late 1985, mm -hmm. there is a nail and splinter loaded bomb in a parking lot of a computer store in Sacramento, California. Mm -hmm. It kills the store owner. The store owner is 38, but he's killed by that bomb. Right. Well, let's fast forward. A, a store. Yes, a computer store. Okay. 1987 mm -hmm. and a bomb disguised as a piece of lumber basically tricks this person by the name of Gary and it ruins their entire left arm. Mm -hmm. This is this bomb was also found in a parking lot of a computer store. However, it's in Salt Lake City now. Mm -hmm. Salt Lake City, Utah. And at least 200 pieces of shrapnel enters his body. Mm -hmm. That's how bad, that's how bad the... Explosive. Yeah, that's how bad it was, mm -hmm. right? Really, really bad. And the good thing about this, like there's a, there's, there's a thing that happened, right? Mm -hmm. During this one. Cause someone saw a man put this, this object down in a certain place there. Mm -hmm. This man was wearing sunglasses and he had like a, uh, like a mustache. Right? But he had like aviator sunglasses and a mustache. Mm. Let's hold that detail. And I'm, I'm sure this individual that was planting that mm. was like, okay, hold on a second. I feel like someone saw me. Mm. So guess what? The bombing stopped for six years. Of course, it's smart. 
right? Yeah, he's smart. But why is he targeting computer stores? Let's see. By 1993, after a six-year hiatus, there's a bomb mailed to a person named Charles Epstein from the University of California, San Francisco. Charles loses several fingers after opening this package. Mm. Let's continue. A bomb is sent to a computer science professor at, the, at Yale University. That professor loses one eye. I or lo loses sight from one eye. Surely. Hearing from a, one ear and a portion of their right hand. Mm. So you can just see we're continuing here, mm. right? It's almost like bombing after bombing, bombing, mm. bombing, right? And one of the last to note was a individual who was killed. This individual was killed from opening a bomb that was sent to their home. That's sent to their home in New Jersey. Oh, yeah. By 1995, Theodore starts sending out letters to multiple, I mean multiple media outlets like mm. newspapers mm. and so forth and he's telling these people publish this paper i wrote publish this paper it's thirty-five thousand words titled industrial society and its future and he states in this essay if you will that i will stop the terrorism if this is met if you guys publish this i will stop so he has already declared war. He has already said, it is me. I'm the one who's doing it, but not naming himself per se, but right. saying, I've been the one the bombing. The one who's behind this paper yeah. is the one who's been doing bombing. the bombings. So this paper obviously gets the FBI. So from the smartest person, to technically a serial killer. <laughs> well, this person, this, this paper reaches the FBI. Mm. <laughs> and they're like thinking, should we publish this or should we not? Because like mm. this is this is obviously scary. Yeah, this is to, a threat to, just to the it, society. To just put it out there, but you named it right there. Mm. That's the reason why they're like, yeah, we have to actually publish this yeah, it's because a threat. this is scary, mm. right? We need to let people know mm. what is going on. Mm. You need to let people know. And they're like coming up with strategies on how to get this published. Mm. How should we publish this? So. Mm. Uh, basically, like the owner of Penthouse, mm -hmm. Penthouse magazine, mm -hmm. some people may know, it's a adult magazine, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. This person says, hey, I'll publish it. No mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. I'll publish it in our thing. <laughs> and Theodore's like, no, this you're not is publishing not, this. Yeah. No, you're not. You want to, if you publish it, I will pick it right back up. Mm -hmm. I'll start again mm -hmm. if you publish it. So he says, he's like, I will publish. Wait, 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 uh, wait. If you publish this, I'm going to send out more bombs. They don't know Theodore is behind this. But, wait, wait. How did he know that they wanted to use Penthouse, that magazine? And then he said that, he, oh, if they do it, I will continue to bomb. I think this was, you can kind of say perhaps, this was probably included in some oh, news Oh, in the East, in the? I think in some news stories. Oh, that all oh, Like that discussions between like... Oh, which, which news yeah, is going to publish yes, it. Yes. And then he sent another letter saying that if this magazine... So I think he basically read some form of news that says, mm. oh, FBI officials are discussing with so-and-so. Mm maybe about some bomb investigations mm -hmm. maybe something but they didn't include the publishing part right because mm -hmm. you don't want to you don't want to tell the people hey mm -hmm. we're about to release a mm -hmm. uh, you know a essay from the bomber mm -hmm. right but i think some of that correspondence was leaked mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and so he was picking up wait a second fbi is talking to penthouse mm -hmm. new york times washington post no, penthouse no. has to be out of there yeah it has to be out of there mm -hmm. Right? No, that's not happening. Yeah. So he gets his wish. The Washington Post publishes the essay September 19th, 1995. And basically what this essay says, mm -hmm. I'll kind of paraphrase a good mm -hmm. amount of it. Mm -hmm. He basically says, technology has been destabilizing the society, mm -hmm. has made life unfulfilling, mm -hmm. has caused widespread psychological suffering. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> you were sending bombs to computer scientists, mm. to electrical engineers. Yeah. You're bombing airlines. Mm. Huh. Yeah. 
Yeah. This is all starting to make sense. Mm. You don't like technology. He does not. He's not for technology. Mm. He argues that people spend their time engaged in unfulfilling pursuits because of technology. He should not even have a car. He should drive that horse. <laughs> <laughs> he should trade that horse. These is people need to stop he? striving for these artificial goals. Why would he go for for an air? Like he should <laughs> blow up his own car and then use use. He says people donkey. are striving for scientific work or striving to achieve goals in scientific work. They're consuming entertainment. They're partaking in political activism. Let's go back to being sports. Apes. Like, come on. Let's go what are you back guys to being doing? Apes. Sheesh. This is not what we should be doing. Cut off the electricity, guys. He says, do you not understand this is going to oppress humans? But he's and using then, the same technology to pass this information. He's writing essays. That's that's all. No, but he said but he it did should, use a typewriter. Yeah. He did use a typewriter. Plus, he's saying it should be published to get. So how is it going to be published? Okay. Using technology. Okay. How is the news going to go around using technology? So He seems like he just wants it to stop though. He wants it to be quiet. He wants he says he says, I just want it to stop. It's let's great. let's not continue with this technological advances. Let's stop. No. This is enough. This is enough. <laughs> That's what a lot of the essay was about. A lot of it was just further talking about technology, how it can ruin us. And also within that essay, he's, he touches on the left political view and the right political view, Democrat and Republicans, right? He's not really agreeing with either of them. He doesn't really see eye to eye with either of them. So there's, there's in a, an, an FBI inspector that's appointed to run this investigation. Mm -hmm. We gotta find this person. Of course. Eventually. Yeah. We can sit around here, read his essay, mm -hmm. right? His 35,000 mm -hmm. word essay. But we eventually have to find this person. And the they have a task force of 150 people mm -hmm. assigned to this. Like they're dedicated to- for yes, person. <laughs> they're, yes, they're dedicated to find this person. Cause this is dangerous. You're finding yeah. these bombings in all these areas. That's True. And it's not easy to connect it, right? Mm. Like, why are you bombing a professor? And then he was smart. Like, he was like, if I do it around just one place, that's easily traceable. So mm -hmm. he was just doing it at random places because mm -hmm. he knew that catching him like that, it's not so easy. And he did it for so many years. So, like, he thought that he would not even be caught. Yes. Probably. Yes. So they dive in. And they are finding that, yes, these bombs are made from like scrap materials. Mm -hmm. These scrap materials, however, are not like, it's not like they're unique to a specific area. You mm -hmm. can kind of get these scrap materials anywhere. anywhere. Like it's not so easy to narrow locate. it down. Yeah, to narrow it down based on just one of the bombs mm -hmm. of some kind. This is not easy. But they do say like, all right, this guy, he is a fairly smart guy. Mm -hmm. And we think that he belongs to academia somehow. Because, because of why all these, all these, these yeah. yeah, why all these bombings yeah. at universities and and mm -hmm. so forth? This this is that's a good place to start as an investigator. Yeah, and they, and they think you know what? After reading his paper, it seems that he's he's a neo luddite, which basically is like yeah, we're against the technology. Mm -hmm. We don't want it to move forward, mm -hmm. right? We really just want to be done with this, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Done with this whole technology wave. Mm -hmm. um, and they kind of draw that he seems like a guy who has hard science education, mm -hmm. mathematics, mm -hmm. right? They're thinking that way, mm -hmm. right? But it's still not enough, yeah. right? It's still tough. Cause I mean, how many people can fit mm, under this umbrella? Yeah. So they eventually say, okay, um, let's offer a 1 million reward mm. and um, basically 1 million reward for anyone who can give us some kind of Ooh. good clues to capture yeah. this bomber, right? Mm. So they, they give out a toll-free telephone hotline. So if mm. you kind of got good tips and tricks mm. <laughs> to find this bomber, give us a call. Yeah. You may be rewarded that $1 million. That, mm. That's a lot of money. And let's reflect on how, like during the time these bombings were going off, 
Mm -hmm. And let's think about Theodore's young brother. Theodore by this, or Theodore's youngest brother, or younger brother, by this time he's married, right? Mm -hmm. he has a, he's trying to build a family. And his wife during this time is like, and his name is David. Mm -hmm. David, I think you should follow up with Theodore, mm -hmm. right? I think you should follow up on him and see how he's doing. Kind of see how he's been and, you know, check on him. Right? He's out there in the middle of nowhere, mm -hmm. and I think you should stay up on the guy. Mm -hmm. he, he didn't seem like he had a good exit from his mm -hmm. his life path, mm -hmm. right? But David's like, uh, he's okay. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I'm not really worried about. I'm him. not really worried about that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's okay. But then he reads. David comes around to reading this this essay that was that was uh, mm -hmm. that was basically published by Washington Post. His like. He's like ah. Oof. Mm, this this sounds, sounds eh, familiar. Yeah, it sounds interesting, mm. right? I'm not sure about this. Mm. But he's like, let me let me search through old papers that my older brother sent me. And it's dated back all the way to the 1970s. Let me go ahead and read these again. Mm. And he finds that in these letters, Theodore is also talking about technology in a similar fashion. Mm. Now he's like, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> this is my brother. Maybe this, maybe this is my brother. Mm. And I should say, uh, to kind of go back, his wife was already thinking that Theodore, the, yeah, the Theodore one. was the guy, right? He was already thinking that, or she was already thinking that, and tried to kind of nudge her husband, mm -hmm. you like know, Theodore's you younger brother, yeah. to start thinking like this too, right? Because this is kind of scary, right? There's no way this huge thing is connected to your brother. Mm -hmm. Like, I need you to look at this. So David, Theodore's younger brother, starts taking this much serious, much more seriously. Mm -hmm. So after when he reads the essay, David, Theodore's younger brother, hires a private investigator and an attorney. And he's like, discreetly watch my brother. Watch his activity. Because now I am kind of leaning towards this idea that Theodore is unfortunately bombing people. And I know his life path right now. Mm -hmm. I know where he's at. So this possibly could be him. But his parents still wanted to protect him. His fa or his family wanted to protect Theodore. They didn't mm. want, they didn't basically want this to happen. Yeah, that's true. Because they were afraid, and I, I believe David was also afraid that the police or that the FBI would try to raid his cabin. There were instances in the past called Ruby Ridge and Waco, like mm. where FBI raided these people's places and ended up killing these people. Mm. So they're like, you know, we at the same time, to don't do this to, to yeah. Theodore because they may, you know, just mm. completely ransack the place and kill him. Yeah. We don't want to see Theodore die mm. like this. Like, mm. we understand he's not up on his feet. We understand he's thinking kind of different. But David, mm. it's your brother. Yeah. It's your older brother. Don't do this. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, it continues. And David gives some of these papers that Theodore wrote in the past mm. to these investigators. Oh. The private investigator, or I should say the attorney that David hired initially, that attorney seeks further, kind of further help mm. from a like a hostage negotiator, crime, mm. criminal profiler. And this criminal profile, profiler is able to really compare the, the essay that was and published the, and, the and then the, right, yeah, the writing that was sent to David. Mm. And he's like, there's like a 60% yeah. chance this is the same person. Right, it's 60% chance. And that criminal profiler says, but let me give it to my team mm. and see what else they think. They say this is an even higher percentage, mm. right? This is, I think this is higher than 60%, mm. right? This sounds, I mean, this this looks relatively similar. They're mm. using the same kind of writing style. It's mm. it's very similar, yeah. right? And so, this, so just imagine a lot of these copies are like passed around to different um, professionals, right? Mm. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that the information is just leaking slowly right. by slowly, slowly by slowly. So everyone's like thinking, ah, yeah. this is like, yeah. Yes, mm. they they, they kind of have a similar writing style, mm. right? This is this is like everyone's like kind of like I'm confident this mm. is like the same person, but who is this, right? Mm. Right? 
well, not I guess not who is this, but like they're thinking this is the same person. Mm. Right? But I guess it's, yeah, it's not like, who is this? It's kind of like, but how are we, how can we like really nail it down yeah. to a point where we the would be able to secure a search person. warrant? Yeah. Right? Because you can't just go off uh, inclination, mm. like, and then take this to a judge and then be granted yeah. a search warrant. You can't do that. Mm. It has to be a little harder than that. Mm. Right? Meanwhile, David is like... I'm feeling bad, right? Mm. I, I've, I've, I have started this. Uh, yeah. Now so, the information has gone. But, but at this point, it's too late. It's mm -hmm. too late to back, back down, right? Mm -hmm. But I am going to ask this. Mm -hmm. Try to keep my name anonymous, uh, yeah. right? Don't, don't put this out, mm. right? Don't let people know. Because if obviously if this is published, yeah. if my name is put out there, my older brother is going to know yeah, that I, that we've started this whole thing and yeah. I'm the one that spearheaded it all. Mm. It's coming from me. Mm. Because for a, for a long time, David like looked up to his brother. Yeah. Because Theo was, was brilliant. Yeah, Theo yeah. Was... Went to the best schools. Yeah. He's like, this is... Yeah, by 25, he was... He had already finished a professor. his job. He was teaching, literally. Wow. Yes, he's like, I want to be like him. But then eventually, obviously, as Theodore be mm. began to live this life, it was this like, isolated yeah, life, he's yeah. like, yeah, I, I can't, I don't want to be like him anymore. Mm. But I still admire him for the person he used to be. Yeah. Right? Mm. I'm not going to let my love go away from my brother. Yeah. Unfortunately, his identity was leaked by CBS News in April 1996. Unfortunately. But by this time, they were able to secure a search warrant. They were granted the search warrant by the federal judge in Montana to search Theodore's cabin. So the news said that David supplied whatever this materials, believing that it's the brother, blah, blah, blah. blah yeah. Blah, blah. Oh my goodness, that's so sad. Yeah. Why would they do that? Why would why would David do this, that? The news, whatever. Oh, why would they leak the name? No. Yeah. It, it just. It's not true. It's carelessness, or it's just yeah. I mean, I think it was just like all right. Like think of the you know the game like uh, I think it's called telephone. Mm -hmm. Oh, so and so says. Like, imagine they're like, all right, so we received X amount of documentation from uh, David. We finally secured a search warrant. Oh, yeah, by the way, don't tell everyone that it came from David. All right, the next person. All right, so we were su they secured a search warrant. They had all this material provided by David. Um, yeah, go ahead. And so next, you know, like, as this is being passed down, it's that part may be, that yeah. part of, well, don't say that it was David, yeah. kind of just slipped away, perhaps. Mm. That's what it seems. Jeez. Right? And then? April 3rd, mm -hmm. 1996. The cops mm -hmm. or the FBI agents mm -hmm. knock on <laughs> knock on the door mm -hmm. of Theodore. We have a search warrant. And they are basically able to access this cabin. Mm -hmm. Cause Theodore's like, he mm -hmm. looks unkept. He wasn't ready, obviously, for guest. Mm -hmm. Is he ever ready for guest? Probably not. Yeah. Right? And then they're able to find bomb components, 40,000 handwritten journal pages that included bomb making experiments, descriptions of the crimes, and one live bomb. One live bomb. They find a typed manuscript mm. of the essay, Industrial Society and Its Future. They're like, yes, it's this is the guy. Yeah. The FBI, it's reported the FBI, this was the most expensive mm. investigation at the time. They spent $50 million on this investigation. They actually, shortly after this, after when they captured him, they thought he was actually connected to the Zodiac Killer. <laughs> they thought he was the Zodiac Killer, but, uh, but there wasn't sufficient evidence to show that. Mm -hmm. And they didn't want to pursue that. They, mm -hmm. they thought, okay, we already have this now. Yeah. So let's not pursue it, but it's interesting to think that they yeah, thought, thought about that. he was the Zodiac Killer. Mm -hmm. So by June 1996, he's taken to court for 10 counts of illegally transporting, mailing, and using bombs. During this case, or during this, like, basically the, the trial, there was, uh, he, Theodore had a, an attorney. He has an attorney representing him and basically fighting against the death penalty. 
Like, I don't want you to get the death penalty. Let's fight against it. Theodore, however, um, or actually I should say, the attorney tries to use this, uh, the reasoning of insanity, right? Saying, oh, Maybe well, well Theodore is insane. Like, yeah. he's really insane to the point that, you know, you shouldn't kill this man. Like, don't kill him. He doesn't deserve to die. He's insane. Theodore's like, no, don't fight for me for this. I'm not insane. Don't put, don't try to tell them that, mm. right? I actually want you to be fired if you're gonna come up with mm. such things. Mm. If they wanna to try to use the death penalty- He was penalty, not trying to survive that yes. much. If he's like, if they wanna use the death penalty, yeah. go ahead. And he's like, actually, I want another attorney. I want an attorney that's going to disagree with the insanity claim and instead use my anti-technology view as sufficient, reason for, mm. for sufficient reasoning for what I've done. Use that. I don't want you to try to use this insanity stuff. I'm not insane. Mm. I know what I was talking about. And you can kind of like putting yourself in his shoes. His you can see he's his really, thoughts, yeah, he yeah. really believes his philosophy. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And it's interesting because think back to remember when he went through that experiment? Three years, yeah. It's like you're being berated mm. for what whatever you believe. You believe. In, yeah. But now he's reached a stage of comfort. Yeah, he with does his not beliefs. care. You will not shake this yeah. out of me. Yeah. This is what I don't I care if they want to kill me. Yeah. I'm not wrong and this I'm is not crazy. What I believe in. I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. Because he suffered in that class actually a bit. Yeah. Yes. People criticizing him yes. and whatnot. Yeah. Yes. Right now he does not care at all. But psychiatrists attempted to classify him as a schizophrenic, schizoid, mm. um, having some kind of paranoia. Mm part of him and he's just rejecting this mm -hmm. he even says that his family they're trying to spread that too mm -hmm. to try to get me out of the death penalty sentencing mm -hmm. and he's like no they're wrong as well mm -hmm. i'm not crazy there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with me by january 22nd 1998 he pleads guilty to all the cases or to all the charges and he accepts life imprisonment without parole mm -hmm. In 2006, the judge orders Theodore's stuff to be sold, sold off in an auction. They already designated 15 million to go to these families who are impacted. Mm -hmm. So whatever money they earned mm -hmm. from selling Theodore's stuff, except mm -hmm. for obviously like the, the bomb mm -hmm. recipes and so forth, everything else, well, all the other valuable stuff or mm -hmm. any other proceeds they could get would go to those families. Oh, it'll be added onto the 15. Yes, yeah, added onto the 15. Oh. Oh, okay. So the government actually gave out money. Yes. Ah, okay, okay. That's what it seems, yes. Okay. So he begins to live this life in prison. And very early in his prison sentence, he befriends two inmates. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. He befriends a inmate by the name of Ramzi Youssef and Timothy McFay. Ramzi Youssef was one of the people who took part in the World Trade Center bombing mm -hmm. of 1993. Sure. And Timothy McFay, or Mc, Mc, I don't know how to say his last name, unfortunately. Timothy McPhee was the person behind the Oklahoma City bombing. And he starts just speaking philosophy with these individuals. And he just lives this life out in prison. June 10th, 2023, mm. Theodore is found unresponsive in his cell. Mm. And the hospital pronounces him dead. Mm. Prison officials believe that it was a suicide. But they also say that he had cancer. That's the story of Theodore Kaczynski, otherwise known as the Unabomber. Oh, he's called the Unibomber. Unibomber. Oh. So if you hear someone just say Unibomber. I think, I think I've ever seen like a series called Unibomber, but I've not watched it yet. I yes. don't know if it's relate, related to this. Possibly. I, I've never be. heard of it. You've never heard of it? Mm -mm. I think it's on Netflix. It's called Unibomber. We should watch it. Probably, yeah, we should watch it. Ooh, interesting. You mentioned that name and I'm like, but I've seen this somewhere. I just never clicked it. Yep. Oh, interesting, interesting. But I don't think it's related to that. It might not be. But it's a long series. It's not like a movie. Mm -hmm. And it's not a documentary. Okay. Yeah. I'll be curious to know what it's about. Yeah, same here. But this is this is interesting. 
Mm-hmm. So he died. He lived his life in prison from 1996, technically, because mm-hmm. he was arrested in 1996. Yeah. Up to 2020. He died in 2023, last year. Ooh, he was... That was 26 years in prison by that time. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Would you say that he's just like... Uh, do you really believe he believed in those things? Yes. Same here. I do believe it because yeah. he, he didn't because waver. think about it, he had, he was on the golden path. Yeah. Right? A lot of people would want his life. They would want his brain. But what was the tick? What what made him? It's, uh, I don't get it. What, what was made, the... Yeah, the moment that made him become this. Hmm. Well, I mean, I think he found something to blame for his, for the disconnect that he had with people. Mm. Like he found, he kind of reduced it down to technology as the reason. Mm. Because as a kid, he was, because he did get along with kids his mm. age at first until they moved him out of yeah, his they grade level. to move him, yeah. So I think after that, he was just incapable of, of like gaining any kind of closeness from people. Mm. And I think as he got older, he formulated that. Like, he's like, oh, it's probably because of this, and then and then this, and then this. Mm. And that all kind of combines into technology. If he was in this generation, he'd be like, everyone is on his phone, (laughs) blah, blah, blah. No one is talking to him. I mean, for sure. I mean, the man who was talking last year, he knew about iPhone, and I'm sure... He was in jail, though. It's not like... He heard about this stuff. He heard about it. Yeah, he's like, my course didn't go through. It didn't work. I tried, I tried. It didn't work. But yeah. It's just interesting how... It's sad. How he was set on this trajectory. Mm. He could have been a great person. Does this teach us that? Don't push your your kid even if they're smart to... Just push them to other levels and other levels. Because it might take a toll on them or what. I don't know. I mean, I think this is a good lesson to learn people skills. Mm. But if you're not... Because he was very smart, but... I think that is what they could have taught him in school. And that's what I'm saying. You Mm -hmm. could teach him people skills that so that even though he's talking to people three years older than him, Mm -hmm. five years older than him, he can can at least try to navigate the the, the communication portion of it all. Mm -hmm. From what what his professor said, Mm -hmm. and the students didn't like him, like from what everybody basically said was that he didn't really talk. Like, he didn't really yeah, know how to talk. Yeah, they left a 16-year-old in university without any friends. And it, it's lonely. Yeah. And it's only... that. I think that was the start of it. And being smart like that yeah. can be lonely in and of itself. Yeah. But if you can't express yourself, you can't really talk that well to gain That's somebody so to be your yeah. friend, you're going to be in trouble. Mm. Right? So here he is, like, dealing with these thoughts in his mind all day, being by himself. His only, like, feel-good moments come from, Mm. like, solving math problems. Mm. Eventually, you're going to be tortured by your own self within your own brain. Mm. So it's like he came up with this thing of if we just get rid of the technology, if we stop going this path, I think I would even be able to communicate have good relationships with people mm. be able to be friends but he others. hates his brother for that i think that is worth searching mm. how like how was after that? when he yeah. was actually sentenced how was that relationship throughout these years mm. with david in between david and, and he, theodore yeah how was that relationship yeah this is sad sad for the people who died sad for him also it's actually sad for him you can't say that he, oh he was arrested yay but it's also a sad journey for him yeah because this was going to be a very great person this was going to be a very smart brilliant good person a good member of the society you know big brains but it just got ruined and couldn't be functional even if he denied being psychologically whatever i mean i would say he had a problem still i would say but would you classify it as that kind of problem no not that kind of problem you know what i would classify it as i would classify it as an emotional problem some kind of emotional problem because think about it there are so many people who 
he's coming from the side of like not hatred but love and then follow me here i know it may sound weird but he's basically saying i want you guys to get rid of this so we can be close like he has motives to he he has a motivation to do good at the end like or not do good but he wants good at the end of the day he wishes for something better. I would say. Where yeah, some people that end up going down this the path. The loneliness. Have just pure evil behind their eyes. The loneliness made him become this. Yeah. The loneliness. The, he was just out of touch with reality. And it didn't help that he was living somewhere without remote. any yeah, remote. Yeah. It didn't help. Yeah. That's, that's, that, that that's made the it worst worse. decision he made. It just made it worse. So... Because he's just living with his thoughts now. Yeah. And books and reading and reading and trying to eliminate anyone who's for the thing that he's against. So it's a very sad reality. Yeah. Even if he was trying to prove his point, he would have proved it in another way by actually teaching in school, doing something yeah. rather than bombing people for that and doing all that. Yeah. It was quite... It was good. It was a good, good one. So... You Do seem... you think we should go through this part again? <laughs> you you picking we we No, I it. think I think you can tell us what the next one will be about. And you can change you know. I don't, you don't even know. Okay, give, give, give me give me like four genres and then I I, I I just choose one. I think four genres is like very <laughs> That's a lot. I think Yeah, you, I if think, you if you no, give I, it two how I'll about this? Like, how about this? Mm. Just choose out of two. Which one? Give me one of two. Hmm. <laughs> it's tough to just come up with out of the blue. Yeah. But how about this? Do you want a story that is kind of further down the path of, of uh, murders or mm -hmm. <laughs> people going missing or something of that nature? Do you want a more positive story? Mm, that one. Positive. <laughs> <laughs> No, we need to know what happened so that I mean, we can be I mean, careful. So, I mean, some people want to hear stories about inventions and... E not me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but it's not me, though. I just want to hear things that would make, would make me be like, okay, now I have to be careful doing this. Like, you know, these stories are not necessarily to scare you or make... At, at times, it makes you aware. Okay. Aware of things that happen, aware of your surroundings, aware of what you should be looking out for. So, yeah, I, I, I'd like to know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll see what we find. And that will be uh, what we read. All right. Or what I read. Yeah. To all of you. I will be waiting until next time.